good morning fellow Ambazonians, fellow Southern Cameroonians. Once again, this is Comfort Comfort. This is Monday morning and I am here so we could put our heads together to make an appraisal of the last week. From my own point of view, we have spent quality time for the past few days dwelling on things that are irrelevant for the forthgoing of our struggle. One of them being the big topic, Agbobala. I don't think we need to visit a soothsayer to tell us that our struggle is God-ordained. It was God's making that at the very beginning of this struggle, Agbobala be sent to prison. Because if he did not go to prison, maybe we would have made him our leader and maybe he would have sold us for 30 pieces of silver. God said no. That was why he went to prison. And it is showing, it is glaring. When he came out of prison, what happened? He denied us like Peter denied Jesus. Even after the cock crow, Agbo did not remember that somebody died for him, that somebody has been maimed for him to have his freedom. He denied us, he's still denying us. Does that give us reason to keep talking about it? Let us make him irrelevant and find time to continue. Let us not lose our focus. Let's focus on what is our dream. Nobody said Agbobala was going to be the one to take us to Boya. He did not even say so. From his actions, from his activities, he did not say he was the one to take us to Boya. He is not even ready. He is not part of us. He is not part of it. So let us stop talking about Agbobala. Let us think and talk about things that will take us one step forward. We've got a lot of them. As a layman, I would cry that my brothers and sisters have been killed, they have been maimed, they have been raped, and all of those things. But as a professional, a human rights lawyer, Agbobala would have explained it, I would have presented or made a crit critical analysis from the professional point of view of the fact that we, the Southern Cameroonians, our rights to fundamental, uh, our uh, fundamental uh, human rights have been violated. Even the right of living, we don't have it back at home. If this does not mean anything to Agbobala, then it is nothing for us to be talking about. Agba was thrown into prison so that we could find the real leader for our struggle. And we've got one. So he should be a non-issue as far as our struggle is concerned. There is another controversial issue now going on. One newspaper writes that Agbobala's house has been set ablaze. The other one writes about Vada's father's house has been burnt. So now I have a question or a few questions. Was any house burnt? Whose house was burnt? Balas or Daddy's? And there is already a list circulating asking for support, for financial support to re-erect his building. Is that, the, is that the important issue at hand now? What is all that for? Agbobala is nothing but a distraction. He is irrelevant. Let us make him irrelevant. Let us stop publicizing him. Let us stop making him relevant even before the whole world when we've got relevant things to dwell on. Let us keep this topic aside and start this week with something brand new. For example, Mancho Bibixi is rotting in jail. It has been long, even myself, I've not posted anything about Mancho. No hashtags, no tweets, myself I have not done. And there are a good number of people who have not done. About Mancho, people hardly speak about Mancho this week or these days. But the honest truth, where we are now, Mancho is sick, Mancho is having a skin disease. He cannot go to the hospital. Is it because he said he's ready to die that we want to let him die? Is it because he said he's ready to die? that we want to we want to make him irrelevant and already forget forget about him even before he dies i am talking here about mancho bpc the coffin revolutionist let us talk about mancho let us replace any other new thing that you have written this week you are preparing to post be it on twitter be it on facebook be it wherever in any whatsapp forum let it be about mancho bbc let it be about pen terrence let it be about all arrested let us visit Mancho BBC. Let us sing his praises. Let, him, let us put him on the relevant position he is due. Mancho is our hero. 
hero. He is the coffin revolutionist. It is not because he made his coffin and made himself prepared, still declaring that kill me for others to be saved, that we want to let forget about him. Does it mean that even if he dies, we're going to forget about him and this soon? No. Let us drop Agbobala. He is no longer part of us. Tapa Ava will say, jump and pass. Let us jump Agobala and pass and talk Mount Cho BBC. Let us talk Pen Terence. Let us talk all the arrested. Let us talk all, the, all who have disappeared. Let us talk all who have remained. That is the relevant thing now here. Let us tweet. Let us find out what the, uh, the, the, the Secretary General of the United Nations come to do in Cameroon for four hours. Let us find out to know, did anything transpire at all? And what are we supposed to do again apart from that? Let us talk protest. Let's even organize protest demonstrations just to cry that Mancho, BPC, Penteras, and the rest be revealed. That was what we did. People had night vigils. People slept by the roadside so that the rest could be revealed, released. That was how Agbabala was released. That was how the other few were being released. Mancho is sick. The rest are surely equally sick. We are seeing the one of the skin because it's a skin disease, it's visible. We don't know what is going in there, inside the internal system. Do we just want them to die like that? Have we not lost enough souls already? Let us do something this week, please. Let us change the topic. Let us replace Agbobala with Mancho Bibixi, Pen Terence, all arrested, maimed, raped. I think this is going to be something. Let's visit him, if you can. Let us finance him let us send him money for food let him send him medication when i say him he is only the leader representing the rest who are out there in the prisons let's send them uh, medications let us tweet about them let us do hashtags about them let's just do things let's talk mantra bbc and the rest this week please agbobala is a forgotten case he is not one of them we don't need him he doesn't need us nobody is forcing him we hear he has been earmarked for the post of the prime ministry God bless him. Let him go ahead. We are going our own way. Even the elites have denied us. Are we not moving on? Agbobala is only joining the other people. That was where he belonged. But we are the ones refusing to see. But God is showing it glaringly to us. That is why he reveals him so fast. So that we don't get him mixed up into our stuff and then get ourselves into trouble. What if we stayed, if he stayed quiet and then we took him. Imagine that Agbobala were at the conclave now with, the, with his own stand. What would have been the result of Agbobala going to our conclave and coming, coming back? It would have been more than dangerous. So God is revealing it. We are like struggling, refusing to see or to hear, to listen to God. Please, Agbo is not part of us. Bala is not part of us. Let's move on. Let's talk Manchu. What about our refugees? More than 40,000 of them are out there in the river state in Nigeria. Let us talk about our refugees. What are we doing about them? What is their situation? We are lying on our beds. We choose to bathe either with warm or, or cold water. We choose to eat either warm or cold food. We eat, choose to eat one or two things, what we want to eat. They don't even, we don't know. They are surely lying on palm fronts on some swampy areas, being eaten by mosquitoes, bearing babies in bushes like animals. They are vulnerable to illness, not only to illness, but even to prostitution. The girls will surely go prostitution, prostituting so they can get something to eat. They are up and they are, they are exposed even to rape because they will see that they are helpless. Nobody is here for them. They will, they, 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 they will still be exposed to rape. It's not like they have escaped it. Let's talk about our refugees. They are dying. They are suffering. They barely have something to eat. I don't know how they sleep. I don't even just want to imagine because I will never understand what they have gone through bearing a child inside the bush. Those are the things we should be talking about these days. Those are the relevant things for our struggle. Those are the things that matter for us. One of our brothers proposed last evening on the hard talk on SCBC is launching a $1 support thing. If you have not been supporting anywhere, if you feel that you want to support this brother, go ahead and support him so that we we'll reach out to our refugees. We don't want to let them die again. They are only running for their dear lives. 
Let us not let them go and get more frustrated. We have lost enough already. The good news is at least we know that they are somewhere. They are somewhere. We know that they are somewhere in Nigeria. But how is their living condition? How are these mothers doing? Most of them are single mothers. They are teenage girls who dropped from school because of this struggle. How much do they need to sacrifice before we make them irrelevant? How much do they need to sacrifice before we recognize them? Before we know that they have done more than enough? Let us tweet about them. Let us do hashtags. Let us contribute money. Let us pray for them. If we can call, let us call and talk to them. Let us just do something. Let them know that they are with us. Let us keep talking to the United Nations that our people are dying. Our people are frustrated. They are spread, they are spread all over the world as if they, have, they don't have a land, as if they lack property, as if they lack anything because of what these people have put us on into. We are up to the task. Let's get organized. Let's focus. Let's make relevant things relevant. And the irrelevant ones, let's make them irrelevant. Let us move on the right way. Apart from that, our conclave is still going on. It started on a bad note. It started on a, in a difficult way. But by the grace of God, all is well that ends well. We, are, we cannot give up. I am still trusting God for something good to come out of our conclave. They are still there. Why not pray for them? Why not pray for good results? Why not pray for God's wisdom? Why not pray for good leadership to come out of it? Why not pray that something should come out that would give us a new first lift in our revolution? This is a challenge to all of us, even our leaders, because they have never been one, they have never been in a revolution before, and they were not planning for it. We were not planning. It's really challenging. But we are able, we are able to decipher what is relevant for this struggle and what is not. And let us make quick decisions by dropping what we don't need and taking, handling what we need with care, moving on with it. So that we get to Puya as soon as possible. So that we can even change our topic of discussion. We've got much to dwell on. We don't have to dwell on things that are irrelevant. We don't even have the time. Let us pray for them. Let us pray for ourselves. Let us pray for unity. Let us pray that we get to Boya as soon as possible. Everything is possible as long as much as we trust in God. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a nice week. Comfort, comfort.